It's one of those brands that a lot of people think, oh, do they make power tools? They're not what you call big in the UK, but they're there and they've got a loyal following. They've been in the game for quite a long time and they make some very nice tools. Now, I'll just say one thing about these sustainer cases while I'm in the mood, and that is that although I like them, they're a little bit brittle. I have actually had sustainer cases, Festool in particular, I found one where the hinge was broken from day one and it's very very annoying when you get a nice power tool in a nice case and you put it in the back of the van and obviously something else falls on it or you throw something on it and before you know where you are you've got a broken case so i just wish they'd make them out of a plastic which took a little bit more impact anyway that's enough of me moaning let's get on to the tool itself and this is a smart brushless motor, 18 volt drill from Panasonic. And what does that smart mean? Well, what it means is you've got a little button down here. And when we press the button here, the first one we get is the high setting there. Press it again and it sequences down and we've got low, medium and high settings. That will be fairly familiar to a lot of people. Basically, what that's doing is limiting the speed. We've still got our variable trigger on it so we can adjust our speed up and down, but it won't go any higher than that set speed. So when we go scrolling through, once we get to high, if we keep our finger on, you'll see the green light comes on. This green light indicates the tapping mode on this drill now. If you're a builder who's putting in steel beams and you want to tap the holes to put the bolts through, anything like that, then this tapping mode will be useful. If you're not, it's difficult for me to think of another application that you might need. But the, the idea of the tapping mode is if you know anything about tapping, you'll wind that tapping in a little bit and then you'll wind it back out a bit to clear the swarf on it, then it go back in again. That's on the, the tapered ones and bit by bit you will enlarge the thread if you like, you'll deepen the thread until you get there. So the way we do that, obviously you put a tapping bit in the front and then you just press the trigger down. Now when I press it again, it goes backwards. So then I take my finger off and I press it again and it goes forwards. which is brilliant because if you're tapping through, that's exactly what you want to be doing. A little bit forward, a little bit back. And just to give you another indication, down here is the light. So you know at the moment that it's going to go forward. And the next time the light has changed down there so you know on the next pulse, it's going to go backwards. So great little thing. I guess I just thought of something. If you actually got your drill bit stuck in something, that would be quite a handy thing to do is to just do that and you might also want to use that if you've got a stubborn screw that's maybe been in there for years and years and is all rusted up that might help that but tapping is what it's designed to do. So after nine holes, this going through this knot, this is cut out on us and that's the thermal overload switch, if you like, the thermal cutout to protect that motor from going up in smoke. So that's just about on the limit there. Going through that very hard knot with a fairly blunt bit, 32 millimeter bit and the motor is going, hey, give us a rest, will you? Take your finger off the trigger, put it back on, and it goes for a little bit more, but best thing, just cool it. Give it a, actually what you can do is just run it under no load, maybe even top speed. So that was, that's high, that, that was the low one. Yeah, that's all right, because they like being run on a high speed, these bits. 
I love the smell of fresh sawdust in the morning. So we've got the standard torque setting round here. So apart from our speed control, we've got our torque setting round here. I know lots of people don't even use it. They just wind it all the way round to the drilling mode and away they go. But it's got that percussion drilling as well on it. I'm not a big fan of that myself. I tend not to use it. I tend to use an SDS if I'm going into masonry. But it has got it, so if you're a fan of that, and also obviously on here, you've got a two-speed gearbox as well. Now you can use this drill on the five amp hour battery, or you can put a smaller three amp hour battery in it if you want to save a bit of bulk and maybe a bit of weight as well. So these batteries are charged on this charger the Panasonic charger and again I just mentioned the fact that Panasonic are one of the few power tool manufacturers that actually make batteries. The cells inside those batteries are pretty good cells. They are a leader in the rechargeable battery line. This charger has got a very odd little feature really is that you get nothing out of it. You just look at it there's no lights that go on or anything so all you get when you put the battery on charge is you get a green light when it's on charge and when it's finished charging you get nothing and the reason they do that they reckon it's to save electricity but I'm one of those people who likes a few flashing lights and things going on but there you are that's what it does so don't worry about it if you plug it in and you don't see a light on it it's simply because you haven't put a battery in and of course you've got all your standard things here which will tell you whether your battery is overheating or whether it's completely knackered. Brushless motor, loads of torque. The figures are on the screen. If you're a Panasonic fan, you're already running their battery platform, this might be the one for you. So if you wanna see a head-to-head -head on drills, we still have our original test on there where we put all the leading manufacturers up against each other. The models have moved on a bit, so things will have changed, but we're still within views on it. If you want to see us update that, then let us know because we're looking at the idea of updating it. The only trouble is a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of money to do that. And what we're wondering really is if there's two drills of a very similar size and power and you're already running a platform on one drill, realistically, are you going to change drills just because one does 20 more holes than another? Probably not, but I know people want that reassurance when they're looking at tools as to which brands do what, so maybe we'll do it, but let us know and we'll be guided by you.